This video is sponsored by Squarespace. From websites and online stores to marketing tools and analytics, build your online presence with Squarespace. <laughs> Look up that poem. The Queen of Hearts, she ate some tarts, made some tarts. The Queen of Hearts. The Queen of Hearts, she made some tarts. I'm gonna get a copyright strike for that. The Queen of Hearts, she made some tarts all on a summer's day. The Knave of Hearts, he stole the tarts and took them clean away. Hey everyone, Ace of Clay here. Welcome back to my channel. Welcome to another sculpting video. Today, we're making the Queen of Hearts. So given the current state of the world, I really wanted to make something a little more lighthearted and happy this week. Just, you know, because I've been doing like the dark stuff, like the demon last week. Let's do something a little happier now. And I thought the Queen of Hearts would be the perfect addition, even though she is technically a bad character. That's fine. In my head, I always picture her as being somewhat comical and funny, so that's kind of how I design her. So with all that said, I really hope, if anything, this video just allows you to forget the world for a little bit and sort of escape into the sculpting process. And without further ado, let's get started. All right, the first step is armature. I'm just using some 12 gauge aluminum wire and I'm attaching the arms to the torso with some floral wire. And as always, all of the materials and tools that I use in this video are listed in the description box below, along with my affiliate links if you want to purchase anything. Then after twisting the middle section together, I am adding it to some aluminum foil, and I'm going to bulk out her dress until it's the size that I want. And then once I'm done with the foil, I'm going to cover the entire thing in some Sculpey Ultralight. This creates a great surface for me to add my final layer of clay later on. And once we've got our body roughed out, we're going to bake it so that it hardens. Then once it's cured and completely cooled down, it's time to add the clay. I got these nice even sheets of my Super Sculpey Original by rolling it through my pasta roller on the thickest setting. And we're just going to create a nice even layer of clay over the entire thing. Then once that's on and relatively smooth, we're going to start adding some details. First set of details that I'll be adding is the drapey fabric in the front of her dress. So I'm just rolling out these snakes of clay that taper at the top, attaching it to the piece, and then blending the edges in with the rest of the sculpture. And I'm going to repeat this process to create as many folds as I want. Now once I've got those folds on, I'm just going to create the other part of her dress. And when designing this in my head, I kind of want it to be like a two-piece dress where she's kind of got this big coat on over her other dress, if that makes any sense at all. I'm just creating the edges of the coat right now with these snakes of clay, and you'll see what I mean later. It's essentially, it's gonna look like she's wearing, like I said, a big coat over another dress, and it's gonna gather like at the waist and then it's going to open up a little bit on her chest and you will see what I mean in a second. Then before I go any further, I want to add some folds and wrinkles to the bottom of her dress. So these are just going to be some more snakes of clay that I'm blending in like so. Now one of the biggest challenges for me when creating her was to not be too heavily influenced by other famous depictions of the Queen of Hearts from Alice in Wonderland. Like we've got the Disney version, of course, we've got the Tim Burton live action version, and I really didn't want them to influence me. But in the end, you'll see when she's done, she is influenced by the other designs, but I did kind of give her my own spin and my own flavor. And I like that I didn't directly copy anything or anything like that, but it was a challenge trying to make her completely original because there are so many depictions of her out there. Now to further enhance her dress, I'm just gonna add these poofy pieces of fabric up here around her waist. I don't know if there's like a technical term for this. Anybody who is a costume designer, let me know what these things are called if they have a name, but I just shaped them out from some aluminum foil so they're not too thick and heavy, covered them in clay, adding some fold and wrinkles right now, and then I'm going to stick them on with some bacon bond. Mm -hmm. 
than where the two sides meet in the front. I'm just adding this little button thing. And then we're going to finish off the bottom of the dress with some nice piping. And in my fairy godmother sculpture from last July, I used a lot of piping. I love how that turned out, so I definitely want to use it again. And we're going to go ahead and make that little button thing a little bit bigger. Now for the next step, after positioning the armature for the arms, we're going to cover them in clay. And then before we add the neckline for her dress, I'm just gonna make her neck first. Then to create the neckline, I'm just adding a tiny snake of clay, another sort of piece of piping, but I'm going to blend the bottom edge in with the rest of the dress, as you can see here. And then add a little wrinkle in the front. Now for some more decorative embroidery and piping in the front here. And then I'm going to start creating the opening for the top part of her big jacket. You can kind of see where what I'm going for now. And then I've decided that I want her to have a long sort of turtleneck. So I'm just going to go in there and add some grooves with my Explorer tool. I'll paint that later, of course. And now for her sleeves. It took me a second to figure out what to do with her sleeves. And I settled on this sort of pointy shoulder kind of thing and then I put this big collar around her neck like that and I really like how this turns out it's kind of um kind of villainous but not too villainous just enough for our queen of hearts just adding some details here to those little sleeve things with my explorer tool to match the neck and then of course finish it off with some piping this piping makes such a huge difference and now we're going to add some bacon bond and stick on that collar. And then while applying the collar, I thought it would be a nice idea to make it wavy instead of just straight like that. I kind of like it wavy. I think it looks cool. Kind of like a flower. Not too bad. Let's keep going. Let's make her hands. I'm just going to blow through the hands here because it's the same process I do in every single video. If you want a more detailed hand tutorial just check out one of my older videos now before i attach the hands i want to give her a scepter she needs a little prop so i'm just taking this 12 gauge aluminum wire that i've straightened out as much as possible rolled it into some clay now i'm shaping out this little heart topper for it I'm gonna stick it on with a little bit of bacon bond finish it off with a little sort of lip thing at the bottom and then add some piping around the edges and then detail this with my little pearlizing tool from Sculpey. And once this thing is done, I'm just going to pre-bake it so it's easier to stick in her hands. Now it's time to shape out the core of her head with some aluminum foil, cover that in clay, making this teardrop shape. Now I'm pressing out her eye sockets with my large ball stylus. Then to create the eyes, I'm just adding a little ball of clay into each eye socket and then using this tool to sort of rock it back and forth to create the eyes and upper and lower eyelids simultaneously. You can see that here. Once you get the hang of this, it is super easy and super effective. I'm using my spoon tool to further shape the lids. And then we're just going to give her a little chin here. Then 
then once the mouth area is shaped out a little bit, I'm going to go ahead and create her lips. Adding the bottom lip first, and then following that with the top lip, of course. Just shaping things out here. Once the lips are on and at a good point, I want to bring out her cheeks a little bit with some more clay, and then I'm just blending them in with my spoon tool. Now I just want to bring out her brow bone a little bit, get some sort of Ursula vibes going here. Then for an added detail, instead of just painting them on, I'm going to give her some physical eyelashes. And now we're going to give her this nice little pointy nose and then use my tiny ball stylus to add the nostrils. Once the face is looking pretty good, we're going to go ahead and add some ears. And I also stick on some little heart-shaped earrings. Then at one point, I gave her dimples. Not sure when, don't know where that piece of footage went, but we're going to brush her with clay softener to remove fingerprints, pre-bake this, and then once it's baked and completely cooled down, we're going to give her some hair. I'm going to use some bacon bond right here, brush that on, and then I'm adding some clay over this ball of aluminum foil, and I'm going to create this sort of heart shape for her hair, a little inspired by Tim Burton's uh, Queen of Hearts. Now I'm going to create a nice curly texture with my firm detail tool. Now to sort of take her hair to the next level, if you will, I'm using some floral wire to create some curls. I am going to wrap the wire around this other piece of wire that I've got to create the right size curl, and I'm going to stick these into her hair every which way to create this sort of unruly crazy look that looks, in my opinion, way better than just leaving it. Now to create her crown, I took a flattened snake of clay, cut out those little notches and wrapped it around this tool here to get the round shape of course, sticking it on with some bacon bond right in the middle there, nice little crown. Then I'm going to attach her head with some more bacon bond, make sure everything is nice and secure and then we're going to get those hands on. But before I stick the hand on I have to add that scepter so I'm just going to bend my wire around the scepter to secure it and then sort of wrap the hand around it to conceal the wire. Then after I attach the hands, I'm just finishing off the sleeves with some more piping and I added a couple rings, very simple rings. Then we're going to brush everything that hasn't been baked with clay softener to get rid of those fingerprints, bake her, and now it's time to paint. All of the paints that I use in this video are folk art brand matte acrylics. To create this unnatural skin color, I mixed warm white with some dove gray. Now I'm just darkening the eye sockets and adding a little bit of shading throughout different areas of her face. Now 
Now using some warm white, I'm going to paint the whites of her eyes. Then using some lightened coastal blue, we're going to give her some eyeshadow. And then we're going to paint her eyelashes black, pure black to be exact. Now I'm just giving her some brown irises with a tiny ball stylus. And we're going to paint her lips with some imperial red. Now I'm just going to highlight some areas of her face with some warm white. Now we're going to go ahead and give her some black, long, exaggerated eyebrows. Now I'm going to rosy up her cheeks with some dry brushed imperial red. Now I'm going to paint all of the white areas on her warm white. And if it sounds like I'm using the same three colors for everything, that's because I am. And now for the next part, I'm going to create some black stripes on her shoulders and neck with some pure black. I really, really like how this turned out. I'm glad I did it. And now I'm painting her coat part of her dress, some darkened imperial red. I darkened this with some pure black and fresh fern, which is green. And for the dress that's peeking out underneath, I'm using some straight up imperial red. Now for her hair, I mixed imperial red with a generous amount of glazed carrots and brown to get this shade right here. And now it's time to paint the rest of the black details. Now for the part that I think really sells it, I'm going to shade everything with some watered down pure black. Now I'm going to go ahead and paint her sleeves and then highlight her hair with a lighter shade just to give it a little more dimension. Now I'm going to paint everything that's going to be metallic black and then go over it with this nice coppery bronze color. Paint the little gemstone and her button with some color shift blue and then dry brush some color shift blue all over the surface of her clothes to add a little bit of magic. And she's done! The Queen of Hearts, who ate some tarts and whatever, is complete. Let me know what you think in the comments and if you think I should make some more Alice in Wonderland sculptures and if not, what should I make next? Let me know. And that's a wrap. I really hope you like the Queen of Hearts. I think she came out really cool. I am so happy with her and I like that I took the extra time to add some extra details. Let me know how you think I did in the comments and if you want to see more Alice in Wonderland sculptures. And then before we close out, 
Let's talk about our sponsor, Squarespace. Whether you're just getting started or you're an established brand, the Squarespace commerce platform supports the way you do business. Whether you're looking to sell products directly or even bill for your services, they've got you covered. For me personally, I love Squarespace for their portfolios. I'm constantly updating my website with more photos of my work and I love how customizable the galleries are and how easy they are to use. And of course, I wanna mention their amazing email support team that is available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. They're an actual team in an office that will typically respond to your questions within an hour. So with all that said, head on over to squarespace.com to start your free trial. And then when you're ready to launch your website, go to squarespace.com slash ace of clay to get 10% off your first purchase. And as always, thank you so much for watching and being here. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and then follow me on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at ace of clay. I'm also on TikTok. Join my Facebook group, Snakes of Clay, and I will see you in the next video.